Cookies. This actually did happen to a real person. And the real person was me. I had gone to catch a train. This was April 1976 in Cambridge, UK. I was a bit early for the train. I had gotten the time of the train wrong. I went to get myself a newspaper to do the crossword and a cup of coffee and a packet of cookies. I went and sat at a table. I want you to picture the scene. It's very important that you get this very clear in your mind. Here's the table, newspaper, cup of coffee and packet of cookies. There's a guy sitting opposite me, perfectly ordinary looking guy, wearing a business suit, carrying a briefcase. It didn't look like he was going to do anything weird. What he did was this. He suddenly leaned across, picked up the packet of cookies, tore it open, took one out and ate it. Now this, I have to say, is the sort of thing the British are very bad at dealing with. There's nothing in our background, upbringing or education that teaches you how to deal with someone who in broad daylight has just stolen your cookies. But in the end, I did what any red-blooded Englishman would do. I ignored it. And I stared at the newspaper, took a sip of coffee, tried to do a clue in the newspaper, couldn't do anything, and thought, what am I going to do? In the end, I thought nothing for it. I'll just have to go for it. And I tried very hard not to notice the fact that the packet was already mysteriously opened. I took out a cookie for myself. I thought that settled him. But it hadn't. Because a moment or two later, he did it again. He took another cookie. Having not mentioned it the first time, it was somehow even harder to raise the subject the second time round. Excuse me, I couldn't help but notice. I mean, it doesn't really work, does it? We went through the whole packet like this. When I say the whole packet, I mean there were only about eight cookies, but it felt like a lifetime. He took one, I took one, he took one, I took one. Finally, when we got to the end, he stood up and walked away. Well. We exchanged meaningful looks. Then he walked away, and I breathed a sigh of relief and sat back. A moment or two later, the train was coming in, so I tossed back the rest of my coffee, stood up, picked up the newspaper, and underneath the newspaper were my cookies. The thing I like particularly about this story is the sensation that somewhere in England there has been wandering around for the last quarter century a perfectly ordinary guy who's had the same exact story, only he doesn't have the punchline.